All right, so before we begin, we'll just introduce the hosts for today. Uh, my name is Kitty. I'm the Chief Head of Finance. I'm a fourth year computer science student at the UC. I have a logistics coordinator at NW Plus and also a product management intern at Signify. And hello, I am Ayub Um In addition to that, I am currently an engagement coordinator at NW Plus for the Lava Center. Yeah, so let's go over today's agenda. We're going to first talk about what hackathons are. Uh, we're going to talk about how to make the most of your team, how to build a team, kickstart your project, how to get unstuck, how to submit your project. And then Irene's going to talk about how to pitch your project. And then at the end, we'll give some final command of info and tips. So firstly, what are hackathons? Hackathons are an immersive learning environment where hackers can explore new technologies and learn more about tech by building a hands-on project in teams. They can learn new technical and soft skills by attending hands-on workshops, create new connections by meeting hackers, mentors, and sponsors, and also pull down your laptops by joining us for fun activities throughout the event. So this will look like late hand community, um, game stuff, hackathon, will be a lot of fun, so make sure to come for those. In terms of making the most of your time, I would say definitely don't be afraid or intimidated if you have no programming experience. So I actually went to my first hackathon, like barely knowing how to code Hello World in Python, um, but I still came out of it and ended up getting like one of the sponsor prizes. So biggest goal if you have no like previous experience is just to try to learn something new um but before you go you definitely want to decide on your goals for the event so everyone's goals are different some people are going just because they want to win they want to win a prize that's totally okay um some people want to try to build something with an unfamiliar technology um some people just want to have fun activities and some people just want to like learn and gain exposure to hackathon environment um so the biggest thing is to decide on your goals before the event another thing is to make sure you network with the sponsors we're going to have a lot of sponsors well not a lot but we're going to have a fair amount of sponsors um and lots of them are looking to recruit um lots of them are hiring interns so make sure you talk to them and then this is kind of the point, but try your best to build a project and have something that you can like be proud of, that you can show by the end of it. Um, and also try to talk to others and meet new people. This is something that's really important. Um, one of my favorite parts about hackathons is you're in an environment with so many like-minded people. Um, you have so many people who are like passionate about tech who might want to do the same things as you, uh, who have a lot of experience in the things that you want to do. So make sure you talk to them and try to learn from them. And with that, we're gonna put that into practice. So for the next five minutes or so, um, I want you all to stand up, walk around, and talk to at least one new person. So if you have extra time, but find out who you think about them. And yeah, uh, I'll pick one out of you here. Go on. <laughs> oh yeah. I did that last time, but it like didn't work. So. But oh well, try again. <laughs> I think so. Last past few weeks have all been really great. <laughs> What's my finals? I wonder if I can. It's my finals and my internship. Just one. There's more choice items. Yeah. Uh, guys. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. 
Okay, 30 seconds left. Wrap up your convo. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, time's up. Um, so I said I'd pick a random group to talk about what they learn about the other person. So Angela, <laughs> you can you can talk about one person that you uh, chatted with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, before you get a master's degree, Okay, okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much for sharing. And it's nice to meet you, Cecilia. Okay, so let's talk about some common pitfalls when you are at a hackathon. Number one is not getting enough sleep the day before the hackathon. So when you're at the hackathon, you're going to basically expect to not get a lot of sleep. So make sure you get enough sleep the day before. Otherwise, you're just your brain is not going to run. Um, number two is relying too much on your team to carry because number one, you won't learn anything. And number two, let's say that like someone is really impressed by your project and they want to interview you. Um, the interviewer will definitely be able to tell that you got carried because you won't understand like anything that actually happened in the project. So try to actually learn and work with your team instead of just relying on your team. Number three is not asking for help when you need it. So I'm personally very guilty of this in very many of the hackathons that I've gone to, but you'll waste so much valuable time being stuck on something that is very easily solvable if you just ask for help. Uh, we'll have mentors available throughout the hackathon and just lots of help available. So if you get stuck, make sure you reach out to a mentor and see if they can help. Uh, lastly is not communicating clearly with your team. So I would recommend making sure to establish clear roles and maintain open communication when you're working with your team so that you all know what is going on within what you're doing, but also like, you know, what the rest of your team is doing. So if you are looking to win, I do have a couple tips. And number one is don't get too ambitious. This is another common pitfall. Uh, but a finished working project is always better than a great idea that doesn't work. 
So think about your minimum viable product um, and don't get carried away trying to implement too many features or unnecessarily increasing the scope of your project. Number two is to try going for sponsor prizes because usually the pool you're competing against for sponsor prizes won't be as big as the pool you're competing against for overall prizes. So make sure you look through the list of sponsor prizes, see if any catch your eye, and if they do, try to build something that falls into the category. Um, another one that's not on here is think about your target audience as well. So this is kind of a niche tip, but um, I've had instances where like I built like a product that was really cool, but it was the target market was like someone who wasn't able to get healthcare in like the States. Um, but when you're pitching that to a group of like Canadian um, judges, like they can't really relate to that. Um, and it doesn't really seem as impactful to them. So yeah, like think about your target audience. And in the case of hackathons, sometimes that is like the judges. Um, so do you think about that? Obviously you don't have to be limited by that, but that is something to keep in mind. Okay, so let's talk about the hackathon process. Um, first, you build your team, you start your project, don't give up, you submit your project, and then you share it. Um, let's go in depth for each of these. So in terms of building a team, you have four roles. Typically, you have a designer who designs your project and makes things look nice. You have a developer who codes the project and makes things functional. You have your product manager who keeps the team organized and makes sure things happen. And your presenter who showcases the project and makes it easier to understand. So I know the way I have it laid out, it looks like you need one of each, but that is not true. So usually you'll have like mostly developers and a designer, or like sometimes you'll have a lot of designers and a developer. Um, it can be like, or sometimes you'll have like one person who is a developer and a designer and a product manager and a presenter. Um, so this is like very flexible. So these are the roles that you might want in like a very successful project, but don't be limited to these roles. My first hackathon we had four developers and none of us knew how to design. So I ended up like learning Figma within that hackathon. And yeah, it was like a really good experience because I got to like learn something completely new and go out of my comfort zone. So don't be afraid and don't panic if you don't have all of these roles explicitly. Okay, so for kickstarting your project, um, number one is to choose an idea. And when you're choosing an idea, make personal goals or pick a problem to solve. So again, you kind of want to make your problem relatable. And a lot of the time, it's easier to make that product problem <laughs> relatable when it's a problem that you've gone through yourself um, because you really know how to like explain it and pitch it well. Um, next, you want to plan it out. So pick a type of project. Do you want to do web, mobile, Chrome extension, etc. Pick a tech stack. Um, so yeah, like what technologies are going to are you going to use for the front end and back end? And then once you've decided on an idea, really scope it down. So think about your minimum viable product. Um, think about like what is the least amount of stuff that I need to do to get something that can still bring value to my users. Um, and then after that, you want to delegate your responsibilities. So who's going to be doing the UI UX design? Who's going to be doing the front end, back end? Um, yeah, delegate your responsibilities. And during this time, Google and ChatGPT are your best friends. If you get stuck, they can provide some helpful ideas and insights. So for project ideas, when you're stuck, you can definitely look through past command F projects and try to get inspo from the types of project that people submit. But obviously, please don't copy them. Um, I have a link here for the command F 2023 winners. Obviously, you can't click it now, but the slides will be sent in the Discord and you'll be able to view it then. Um, just some examples. So Chow now won command F 2023 gold prize, and it's an application that connects that collects the necessary information from domestic violence victims in order to quickly inform their emergency contacts when the victim needs help. Uh, yeah, I won't read the rest of it, but really cool app. You can look through and get some inspo. Um, there's also ColorPal, which won the best accessibility hack at Command F 2023. So 
this app essentially helps those who are colorblind um, identify colors in makeup palettes. And yeah, you can view the full list here, which we'll post afterwards. And then when you're building your project, a lot of the time you will get stuck as well. So there's kind of a flow. Number one is to obviously Google it or ask ChatGPT. Um, there's like Stack Overflow or community forums. And a lot of the time you'll be surprised because you'll see that there's like a forum started for your exact type of issue. So definitely start by Googling. Um, but obviously don't ask ChatGPT to code your entire project for you because we'll be able to tell, people will be able to tell. And also it probably won't be impressive enough of a project for you to win. You'll also not be learning anything. So don't recommend doing this. Um, number two is to ask your teammates. A lot of the times your teammates are very, very cracked and you don't even know. So try asking them. And then number three is to ask mentors. So we have an ask mentors discord. What's that called? Discord channel, yes. Discord channel. So you can go there, start a mentor ticket and a mentor will go to you or you can go to the mentor room. So hackathons are great places for you to learn how to learn. Don't be afraid if you get stuck. It's a great opportunity for you to learn how to learn. It's also could be a great opportunity to have a story to talk about in your future interview. Because like, oh, tell me about a time you encountered a challenge. It's very, very common interview question. So um, next is project demo. So I'll kind of speed through this because Irene will go in depth. But essentially, you're going to demo your project at the end. You want to win prizes. You want to showcase your progress and work, practice your presentation skills, and show off what you've built. So um, the project demo structure at Command F is to upload your project to DevPost and then present live to judges at demo time. So all of this will be in your hacker package. Don't worry about it. You'll be bombarded with this information afterwards. And um, the judging info, like when and where, will also be in your hacker package. And you'll also be told it over and over again. So don't worry about like copying this down. OK, so once you're done with a hackathon, there's a couple of things you can do. You can write a blog or LinkedIn post to share your experience. This is a great thing for recruiters who visit your profile to see. You can also showcase your project on GitHub or your personal portfolio. And stay in touch with everyone you met. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a LinkedIn channel on the Command F Discord. So yeah, drop your LinkedIn in there, connect with people. You never know who you're going to meet. And another thing is continue your project. You know, you never know where it's going to go. And uh, there's actually one project at NW Hacks who actually, they ended up continuing in it and they got into Y Combinator. Now they're like quite a successful startup. So yeah. Okay. I'm going to pass it off to Irene now to talk more about pitching. Thank you very much. That was an awesome Hackathons 101 presentation. I loved it. So, quick to this, it's now all again PST on Sunday, March 10th. After hours of hacking, your team is finished. You can finally take a break. But wait, there's still pitching to be done. You're not finished. So, I hope in this portion of the workshop, we can go over some pitching basics and just give you an idea of what the product is doing. Have any of you at Hackathons before? Go ahead, no? Okay, first pattern. Awesome. You will be learning a lot today in this workshop. Okay, pitch perfect basics. The who, what, when, and where lies of pitching. So you'll be pitching uh, as a team to judges or an audience during this pitching period. For Command F, the structure is four minutes of the pitch and two minutes Q&A session where the judges or mentors will be asking you questions. And this will be up from 1 to 3 p.m. on Sunday at assigned tables. That information will be released on the day. And the purpose of pitching is to show off your ideas, potentially win a prize, get some investors or funding maybe, and also to celebrate what you built. So it's a really great opportunity. And hopefully after this workshop, you'll be able to say, crushed it with your team. Okay, anatomy of a pitch. So typically in a pitch, you want to cover these five main sections. Problem that you're addressing, what the solution is that you built, a uh, quick demo of that product actually in action, what the next steps are for that product, and lastly, the challenge that you're running. Now, please note that these time allocations are just recommended ones based on the four-minute structure. Feel free to reallocate time as needed for your product 
uh, for your project, and I can see through each of those with your team. So I'll go into each of these in depth to see what the components are made up of. So the problem, introduce a real world problem or experience. This is a great time to bring in personal anecdotes. Maybe you have a personal experience that inspired you to address this problem. Who is your target user? Paint a picture of who this client is intended toward and what kind of pain that they face, what kind of struggles are they going through. As well, Command F does have specific tracks to so make sure to mention which uh, track that you're submitting this project to and be as specific as possible where you can. Good to have more details and really get into the nitty gritty. Um, so here's an example of how you might apply that in an active pitch. So what case statement would be, we focus on making an app to help kids learn better. Yeah, that's good. Well, let's make it even better. Let's say we focus on increasing accessibility in education. So that's the real world problem. Uh, creating a script that would translate text of PDFs into a more readable font and contrast, getting really specific. For high school students ages 13 to 18 who may struggle with learning disabilities like dyslexia, the target user. This is a really great example of applying those bullet points to an actual pitch. Next part, the solution. So introduce your project. What's the name of the project that you made? And as a user, what kind of benefits and features is this project uh, offered to the user? And how does that solve the problem that uh, was mentioned, that you brought up? Uh, again, kind of apply a real example to that. No case statement would be our app scans a grocery item and logs your purchase and expiry dates. Pretty straightforward, but I mean what it does. But you can make it even better by saying our product is grocer ease. Example name. Um, don't forget to say the name. That's actually quite a surprisingly common problem. You just went right into the solution, name drop it, so that's really memorable for the judges. Um, a mobile app to help users streamline their grocery shopping. A user will use the app to scan grocery items to record purchase and expiry dates. So that's the features of this product. And our app will notify users when items are about to spoil. This app helps users minimize their carbon footprint by preventing overconsumption and reducing the amount of food waste they produce. So notice how the last sentence kind of ties exactly into those features that was just mentioned and specifies the impact of the product. Demo, the really fun part. So this is a great time to show off your project and actually go through what you built. Um, in this case, it's okay if you didn't completely finish your project. What you want to aim for is to show at least one complete user flow. So our, is, has everyone heard of a user flow and know what that is or might need a quick refresher on what a user flow is? Getting some shaking head. Okay, just in case, a user flow basically demonstrates an action being completed by a user from start to finish. So let's say, for example, um, in Spotify, a user flow could be showing how a uh, user gets to a song and add a particular page. So you start with the user opening the app, and then the next step that you take, maybe you click into search different artists, go to that artist's uh, page, see their song, and then click the song, or whatever. So I'll give an example of the user flow. And that's the type of uh, thing that you want to show your project demo, so that you can really thought through each of the steps, tell them what you need to read, and then address them to the column. Uh, yeah, so it's okay if you don't have a project done, go as close as you can. And it's a great time to also talk about the technology that you use in your product and why you chose them. Was there a specific advantage of using a certain API or a certain language um, or the back? So here's another example of how you might be able to apply these bullet points to the actual pitch. Uh, a really good statement the Dev builds phone apps to be worked with React Native so you can scale up to many different types of devices. So if you hear them, here's the next specific technology. Our team used Git Kraken to, oh, for version control to try to collaborate with them. Another reason for using the technology. Uh, rest of that example is pretty interesting, just going into why using that specific technology or API. All right, next up. So at the very end of the demo, the judges will have a pretty good idea of what you built and why you built it. Be sure to talk about what's in the future to your projects. What would you have done if you had more time? And what would you do in the future to improve the usability of your app activity as to the features of the target users? So here's an example of how you might make a statement like that. Uh, with more time, we're going to design a system to send out push notifications to engage users. For example, of how you're expanding that system to make the product even better. And in the future, we'd love to use React Native to its full potential and make the app responsive to iOS, Android, and desktop browsers. So by kind of specifying these next steps, it shows that you've really thought about the problem and the product in holistically and thought about ways that you can expand what you did in this hackathon further beyond. 
And if you have time as well, talk about challenges. There's no hackathon project without its challenges. So be very transparent about what problems they ran into and most importantly, how you solved it and overcame it as a team. Uh, yeah, example of how you might say that. We struggled with using this new API because our team members want to challenge themselves by learning something new. So say why you ran into this challenge, why was it significant? In addition to asking mentors for help, we also consulted the documentation for this API and searched through online communities for guidance. Talk about the steps that you took to overcome this challenge. Um, yeah, everyone feeling good so far about what we've gone through? Any questions? Seeing some thumbs up? Awesome. Um, lastly, I think a really great way to make your pitch stand out is to incorporate, um, talk about the creativity behind your project, make it really memorable. So how is this app or product different from the others that are available on the market? What differentiates you from what's already existing out there? And how does this uh, product use technology in a creative way? Uh, lastly, what part of your design is creatively catered to the users? So these kind of questions really help to set your project apart from what's already out there and maybe how you took your specific experiences and knowledge and skills and put that all together into something completely new and uh, un unprecedented. Yeah, so an example of how that might be accomplished. Our educational app is different than other recycling apps that only shows educational info because we implemented a competitive point system that integrates with Apple's iOS data system. There you have your competitive differentiation and users will be able to recycle and compete with friends of their app usage and encourage recycling. And there's the part about how the app is created specifically to the user. All right, some final additional tips to get in some of the insider info for pitching here. Uh, can we use ChatGPT for our team's pitch? I think ChatGPT is a great tool, great jumping off point for you to get ideas about how to uh, approach the pitch, but I would just be sure that um, be aware of hallucinations and uh, bias that may occur if you're using ChatGPT, something that makes up stuff that's not necessarily real. So use it with uh, use it with caution. And be sure that when you're actually presenting your pitch, you're doing it in a way that's authentic to you. So you can use ChatGPT Chat to give you some jumping points to start off of. Make sure that when you're presenting, you're talking in a way that's natural to how you present. As well, if you do have a harder project, for example, or if your project has had some uh, crashes or issues without working properly consistently, it's a good idea to have a backup video or a signal prototype that you can walk through just in case during the actual pitch it doesn't work. So you have something to show the judges in case your actual product uh, doesn't run themselves. As well, the it's really up to you whether the whole team presents or it's just one person pitch. Um, if there's one person who feels really strongly and feels like they can really sweep the judges off their feet, they can go ahead and present it. Whereas if the whole team really wants to pitch in and pitch in, if the whole team really wants to pitch in and just contribute to the overall presentation, go for that as well. It's really up to you how you want to address it. Uh, but overall, I think if you have the opportunity to be part of the pitch, go for it. It's a good learning opportunity and business opportunity to just put yourself out there and take a stab at this really cool, really cool project. And lastly, uh, some of the Q&A questions. Q&A, two-minute Q&A period. Q &A period. Try to anticipate some of the potential questions that judges might ask and use it as a signal to ahead of time so you don't crack it during the Q&A period. And it's really important that your team is ready to pitch when you're live, uh, when you're a prior to present. So the period from 1 to 3 p.m., you might be at the very beginning or somewhere in the middle or somewhere in the end. Just make sure that your team has all the material ready so they know exactly what to say and how they're going to say it um, when the time comes when the period starts. And don't forget that the Bay Olympic uh, volunteer is very kind to be here at Hanan Up and judge these, uh, judge these amazing projects. So please share your briefing and thank them for your time um, at the end of your pitch. Lastly, so very, very important reminders. Uh, make sure to submit your comments by post by Sunday at 12 p.m. PST. Great tip for this is to submit your dev post ahead of time, early as possible, and just make edits to that submission all the way up until the uh, 10 p.m. deadline. That way, even if something breaks at the last minute, at least you have your dev post in. That saves a lot of comments and a lot of waste places. So definitely recommend that. Once again, the project demo is a four minute pitch, followed by two minute question and answer. Make sure to stick strictly to that time limit because the judges do have a lot of different projects that they want to see. As well, the video demos are not mandatory, but feel free to add that onto your project and dev post if you feel that adds a bit of extra spark. And sponsors will be still listed in comments based on your dev post submission. So maybe you do want that video if you have time. And 
Last year, we introduced one of our tracks, the Healthy Balance. And the top project of each of these tracks will be presented to a rabbi at our event on October 3rd. So that's kind of the main things to keep in mind. And again, those will all be available in the paper copy. So if you're going to bomb bombarding this info quite a bit, don't worry. Um, that being said, we're going to go into the QA here now. So if you have any questions about hash bonds or about testing, we welcome them now. Yes. Oh, yes. So, judges, all the sponsors be looking at the different things, or will they just be okay? So, I believe those sponsors will be one of the people that you can see later. You can apply for a sponsor prize, you may have to reach again to them. Yes. So, we'll be pitching once to a couple of weeks to the mentors? Uh, I think we're still deciding. Okay, you'll be pitching to the mentors and the judges okay. first, and then you can apply, uh, you submit your project to additional sponsor prizes. We pitch again to those. Yes. Yes, thank you, Angela. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, 100%. You can just submit your project as early as possible before the event closes out and then edit, make edits to the project right up until submission. But make sure not to edit after, after that is the Any other questions? Yes. Um, you do the video Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, mostly still. Yeah. Because you're one of the yeah, I think if you are if you are able to do a live demo of what you built, that's the best. And like usually judges are like impressed, especially if they can like go and interact with what you built as well. Um, but if you like built it and then um, let's say like something stopped working, then definitely like show your video. Um, yeah, it's not really a problem. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be up to like what they ask you. So, um, like at the end when they're asking you questions, like some people might be curious about like different parts of your project. I assume if you're like applying for, let's say you're applying for like a mental health sponsor prize, they probably ask you more about that. Um, but yeah, I assume it'd be a little different. I think adding on to that, the sponsor might ask you a question specific to how you use their technology in the hack. As well, they might even ask you for changes of the cloud market fit. Uh, maybe it's something that even they'd be interested in investing into, and your hack on project is just like a source of inspiration for them. So cloud market fit, how it might scale in the future, um, questions like that probably for sponsors, I would say. Yes. So you guys might have expectations. So like I just feel like Instagram has friends who are similar to you, especially like friends who are basically friends who are in the So what do you guys do when just finding people who have similar interests? Yeah, I think um so when you're I think most people like go on the team formations channel and discord to find people. So I would suggest like when you're posting an intro in team formations, try to state your goals. So um, if you're a beginner say like, oh, this is my first time. I'm really just looking to like learn something new and like work with um, 
people who are also like trying to learn something new. Um, and then like, yeah. So I would just try to communicate those goals in um, your post when you're trying to find a team. And then like, same thing for when you're actually, uh, like if you go to like a team formations activity in person, just like when you're networking with people, try to communicate those goals. Yeah. And at events like team formation and happening at nine a.m. on Friday, go on to get to know more people and talk about the goals. It'll be the instructor portion where we kind of get everyone to randomly name their goals in the prompt, and it's going to be an instructor portion so you can just talk to people while you talk really quickly. Yeah, there's a there's a team formations channel on Discord, but there will also be an in-person activity. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, so I believe it's max four. So I would recommend like four is ideal because like you just have more people to work on things. But um, like if you have three or less, like I've seen, I think the winner of Command F last year was actually a group of two, yeah. like Chow Now that I was presenting before. I'm pretty sure there were a group of two. Um, so yeah, don't worry if like you're a smaller group you can definitely still be successful, but max is four. Yes. Uh, okay, personally, my personal tech is like, I will, okay, I think, um, for my team, we tend to like kind of take turns sleeping. So maybe we'll have like in a group of four, we'll have like two people um, who are like taking a nap and then like the other two will be working and then like the other two come back. Um, and then we like tell them what we've worked on. And then we'll also have times where like all four of us are together. But I would say like, if you can try, if you can get some sleep, like try to get some sleep, it'll make your brain a lot clearer so that you can code better or design better. Um, but there are also people who just don't sleep. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of up to you and up to like how, like how finished you want your project to be and like how difficult your project is and like what your team skill level is. Yes. question yeah um so i okay so usually before uh you go to the hackathon like the dev post page will be released and on the dev post page you're able to see a list of sponsor prizes um so when you're going through that list if you have like um particular technologies you're interested in learning or um things that you're like Sometimes sponsor prizes will be like, oh, use this technology in your hack. But sometimes other sponsor prizes are like, oh, um, like best mental health hack or like best health hack uh, or like best game dev hack. So my tech is like try to choose, like if you're wanting to try out like a new technology or like choose like a sector to work on. Um, and then also like, this is this is like, more more of like the season what the season hackers do if they're like really trying to win but some people like look at the sponsor prizes and they think about oh which one is going to be like the least popular which one is going to be the one that like people enter the least and then they try to go for that one so that they are competing against less people but personally i recommend just like going with something that you like resonate more so if uh there's like a mental health track prize uh mental health sponsor prize like and that's something that you're really passionate about. Um, go for that. 100% uh, on what Kitty said. There's definitely different strategies and tactics for some prizes. I think in general, a lot of ways team approaches is like two, two ways. One is sort of like a top down where you look at the problem first, problem area first, like Kitty mentioned, and think about a specific problem area that you're interested and passionate about and how the different sponsored technologies could be creatively applied and kind of let that inform your direction.
and less pollution. Whereas the other layer is like bottom up. So you focus on a specific swath of technology and think of ways to critically apply that to some problem. I think both approaches have their own pros and cons. That first approach where you look at problem first, you could end up using a variety of different technologies and it might not be enough to stand out for any of the sponsors. But in alternatively, maybe it's a problem that's very niche and that is very meaningful, has less impact. Both. Um, the other way is kind of going like bottom up of going uh, technology first and then applying that to the problem. Part of that is that you could get kind of like tunnel vision, uh, narrow, like you're forced to see the narrow down your scope to a specific area because you're conflicting yourself on technology. The problem with that is that there could be a very creative application of technology that no one else has thought of that could be a really great way to solve that too. So that could be like two different approaches to how the sponsor Yeah. Anything else? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, so uh, around 300 were accepted, but um, yeah, well, we'll have to see how many people will show up. Yeah. Um, also, like, if you're curious, like, once the dev post is created, you can see how many participants joined the dev post. Yes. Um, I think Irene and I will stay behind for a bit if any of you want to come up and ask us questions or want to like network with us. So, yes. yes. Otherwise, yeah, okay. please fill out the feedback form oh, for us if you have things really appreciate it. Of course, you're better as well. And feel free to check us on the showcase. The five also will be sent out to the Discord and after this workshop. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you, everyone.